What is up? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. Know two important things. Brother Dave loves you and Jesus loves you way more than I can love you. Come on, come on. We're going to be talking about how to be delivered from demons. Okay, I had to walk myself through deliverance a couple years ago. I didn't even realize I had demons. I'll talk about one that affected me most of my life. I had this demon that followed me everywhere. And I could never figure out where it came from. No one in my family could. They felt a dark presence in my room as a kid. No one knew where it came from. Well, I walked myself through deliverance and I rebuked the spirit of homosexuality out of me because I had dabbled in bisexuality. And when I had uh, in the past, it made me want to kill myself every time I did it. So I knew it wasn't me wanting to do it. And I never understood why I got pushed into doing it. But it was because it was a demon that was attached to me. So I cried. When the demon came out, is one of the ways that come, demons come out. And when I cried, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why, why did that come out to crying? And he showed me as a kid, I was molested by a priest at some school I went to. And uh, it all made sense. That demon from that man jumped onto me. Now, the first thing I did was ask, I said, well, Lord, I forgive that man. You know, please, you know, save him or whatever. You don't remember what I said, but it was something like that. Like I immediately forgave him and I let go of it because I'm not going to let something from my past still affect my future. We forgive because we've been forgiven. I don't deserve forgiveness. He doesn't deserve forgiveness. I'm not accepting what he's done, but I'm letting go of what he's done. And a lot of time in forgiveness, we have to let go of what's been done to us. So I had that demon that followed me around my whole life, pushed me to do sexual things, got me into porn at a very young age. I had a lot of dysfunction in the sexual aspect because of this demon that was attached to my life. It's not easy getting on here telling this. I have a lot of people that know me say, David, you shouldn't be talking about this. You shouldn't be talking about that. Well, there's other people that are struggling with it. There's people that think they were gay from birth because of something their parents did in their relationship. Or there was one where Derek Prince was, because I got all this teaching from Derek Prince. He talks about where a lady went to a witch and a, a, a pendulum swung on over her belly to see what the baby was, like what sex the baby was. And uh, that caused that curse to be over that baby. And he thought he was gay because of what the curse was. He was cursed in his mother's womb. See, we don't even understand the understanding of spiritual things. But today you're going to learn. So not everything's a demon too. Oh, I just uh, this is a demon. That's a demon. No, you have to understand what's spiritual and what's physical. What's spiritual is no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I always end up doing it. I always end up falling short. No matter what I do, I can't stop doing it. That's spiritual. Physical is, well, I can stop doing it, but I like doing it, and, you know, I mean, I could. I mean, I do it. I don't want to do it, but, you know, it's not that bad, you know. That's physical. You're just being lazy. You don't want to work through it. But if you've tried everything you can, and yet you still end up falling short in that aspect, usually it's spiritual. We're going to go over it so you can understand. Let's start out with the three objectives of demons. The first is to torment and torture. The second is to keep you from knowing Christ. And this is what I think most Christians have, is to keep you from serving Christ effectively. These are objectives of demons and they fulfill their objectives. That's why most of the church is suffering because they don't, the devil don't care if you build 50 churches, but you don't see demonic deliverance everywhere. Where, what did you see in the Bible? Everywhere Jesus went, demons got rebuked. It was the number one thing Jesus did that attracted everyone because no one had ever seen anyone take rule and dominion over the demonic realm. People knew about demons back there, not like nowadays where we just call it like schizophrenia. Well, look up the definition of what a schizophrenia is. It's two persons. It's demonic. I mean, we just, people can't even grab all this stuff. So let's just continue on. Eight characteristics of demons. They entice, they harass, they torment, they compel, they enslave, they defile, they deceive, and they make people weak, sick, tired, or kill them. Now, the full teaching on this is Derek Prince, How to Be Delivered from Demons. You can go watch it. It's two hours long. It's super long. It, I'm trying to cut everything down in less than 30 minutes so that people can be set free, and you will be set free if you watch this. And if you believe you have it, you'll be set free today. But if you don't believe you have it, you you, you don't believe you don't have it, you won't, have, you won't be able to be set free. You can't. Look, I can go into a pool of water, right, that has leeches, and leeches can get all over my body. Body. That's what demons are. They're leeches, right? And if I don't notice them on my body and I don't acknowledge them, they're going to sit there and suck away at my life, make me sick, tired, hurt me, right? Maybe not kill me, but make me sick, weak, and tired, right? And until I lift up my shirt and I acknowledge that I got them on and remove them, they're not going nowhere. Well, it's the same thing with demons. We have the availability to remove them. Everyone thinks you say a prayer one time and you're set free from everything. Saying a prayer get you salvation. It doesn't get you set free. God might set you free from some things at the starting of your relationship that he knows you're going to be hard for you to be set free from 
you know, by yourself. So he'll just automatically set you free from some. But some he wants you to work through because he's giving you the power and the availability to do it. All right. Here's five common names of demons. Pride, rebellion, witchcraft, or occult. Fear and rejection. All right. Here's demons' names from Scripture, so you know that all this goes hand in hand. Spirits of infirmity or weakness, deaf and dumb spirits, spirits of blindness, foul spirits, unclean spirits, spirits of divination, spirits of bondage, spirits of error, spirits of false doctrine, seducing spirits, jealous spirits, lying spirits, familiar spirits, spirits of antichrist, spirits of fear, perverse spirits, sorrowful spirits, spirits of slumber, spirits of fornication, and destroying spirits. Powerful. We're not going to go over the names of the devil because you guys don't need that. It's just an extra note I had. Here's 11 common gang of demons. First is resentment. This means they come in more than one. There's not just one latches onto you, a couple. Unforgiveness is number two. I want you to notice that. Unforgiveness is a big open door for demonic oppression. For family curses because when you have unforgiveness and resentment towards someone it allows the devil to come in and afflict you or those under your authority third is anger fourth is hatred fifth is violence six is murder seven is disappointment eight is loneliness nine is misery depression is ten and self-destruction here's demons against the mind unbelief doubt compromise forgetfulness confusion Torment and insanity. Demons that affect the tongue. Lying, cursing, blasphemy, gossip, criticism. Demons related to sex, fornication, adultery, masturbation, homosexuality, prostitution, porn, and sexual fantasy. Demons related to lust, nicotine, alcohol, gluttony, and drug and chemical addiction. Demons of infirmity. Now, not all these are always a demon. Hear me. It's when you can't get over it. You go to the doctor. You do this. And no matter what happens, you still have it. It's demonic. Epilepsy, stress, migraine, allergies, crippling, sleep, insomnia, and death. Now remember, these are all ones that, like the death, you're always afraid to die. But all the rest of them, not just because you get a migraine one day, you got a demon. Okay? No. It's, I get a migraine every day and I've had it for the last five years. I don't know how to get rid of it. Well, today you'll be set free. Here's how demons come out. Screams, shaking, convulsion, weeping. Remember, I talked about crying. Historical laughing, writhing, fainting, sighing, groaning, choking, gagging, retching, and actual vomiting. I've watched the actual vomiting at a church when I was rebuking demons out of a guy. Here's how demons come in. An occult background, okay? That means you have someone in your family that has practiced witchcraft or warlock or tarot cards or psych readings. Those are all curses that will be upon your family and upon the next generation until they're broken. Personal cult background, you've gone to a witch doctor or you've gone to a palm reader or you've gone to a tarot card reader. These things will cause curses over your life. Parental influences, parents can be a bad influence and they can push you into demonic Issues of either molesting you, raping you. They can do it by uh, leading you away to tell you to drink at a young age and it's okay. The parents that try to be cool with their kids, it's insane. Soulless domination or manipulation by another person being manipulated or being dominated by someone. God is not the type that dominates. Everything that wants to be dominated and dominate is demonic, 100%. Early childhood pressures like me, getting molested or getting pushed into drugs like I was pushed into drugs a little bit but I, I still made my own choice but you know we're influenced early childhood pressures moment of weakness you know falling back and doing something we shouldn't be doing sinful acts or habits and walls broken down now here's the conditions to be delivered I didn't see these extra verses so we might go through them we might not we probably won't I wish I'd have seen these we might go through them um be humble. You gotta be humble. You gotta you gotta acknowledge that you have demonic beings attached to you. It's not a big deal. Be set free. You can be a Christian and have demons. Okay. Don't don't listen to the people in the world that say, "Oh, you can't. You can't." That's why there's so many Christians that their lives are a mess and they can't get past the issues they're in. Why? It's because it's demonic. Second is to be honest. Third is to confess your faith in Christ. 
Fourth is to confess any known sins of you or your ancestors. Before we get started, I'm going to give you a second. We're going to pray, and you're going to confess any known sins of you or your ancestors. Five is to repent, turn from your ways, turn to the Lord. Uh, six is break every occult contact. If you're in contact with witches, warlocks, uh, tarot card readers, if you have any of that demonic stuff in your house or you're harboring pictures of other gods, anything like that's got to be thrown away and trashed. Forgive all other people. It is an absolute requirement. You must forgive everyone. Then we're going to stand on scripture. Joel 2.32 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Luke 10.19 says, I've been given all authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. 1 John 3.8 says, He who sins is of the devil, for he has sinned from the beginning. It says that Jesus, that's why Jesus was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Why does it say might? Because the might depends on you and depends on me. He's destroyed the works of the devil, but if we don't put into action what he has set before us, we'll never have it. Luke, and now let's go to Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. You have the availability to cast the demons out. And that's what we're going to do today. When I pray over you, you're going to get cast out. But you have to be humble. You have to be honest. You have to acknowledge that you actually have them. And then you can be set free. All right, let's go to Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Today, Satan gets crushed underneath your feet. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. All right, let's finish here. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The devil has to obey us because we have scripture. Now, I want you to, to search and see if there's anything that you need to acknowledge. you got to understand, with the demonic, when we open up doors, and we've, I've lived a heathen lifestyle, so I've opened up a lot of doors. So it makes the availability for me to be attacked and have to go through deliverance. Okay? It's good to go through deliverance. This is not, you don't need to go through deliverance every week or every other day, or, oh my gosh, the devil's just out to get me and beat me down. Listen, walk in the authority you have. You have authority. You're hidden in Christ, but you have to first get off the baggage to be able to be fully in the hiddenness because you're bringing demonic baggage with you so you can't really be fully hidden when you got the enemy with you. You know what I mean? You can't, it's like, imagine playing, a, you know, hide and go seek, and yet the one seeking is with you. <laughs> How are you ever going to hide? You see what I'm saying? So when we carry the demonic beings on us, the, the devil always knows where we are, but we can be hidden in Christ. We're seated with Christ far above all principality and power, might, and dominion. We're seated with him far above everything, but we have to be able to be seated with him without the enemy attached to us. So you're going to be set free. It's going to be powerful. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, show this child of God right now everything that they need to confess right now to be set free any sin that's harboring in them any unforgiveness in them right now show them we're going to take a second and search yourself all right if you need more time than that then pause the video because i'm not waiting no more longer now we're going to make we're going to make this First, proclamation over our lives, and then we're going to do the pray, and then I'm going to pray over you, okay? Say this with me. We overcome Satan when we testify personally to what the Word of God says the blood of Jesus does for us. Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus I'm continually being cleansed from all sin through the blood of Jesus I'm justified made righteous just as if I had never sinned through the blood of Jesus I am sanctified made holy set apart to God through the blood of Jesus, I have boldness to enter into the presence of God. The blood of Jesus cried out to cried out continually to God in heaven 
on my behalf. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We praise you, Lord, for your blood. All right. We're going to say this prayer. We're going to move slow. When we do, we're going to go through it. You're going to say the prayer. When you're done, I'm going to say amen. You say amen. I'm going to pray over you. You're going to be set free. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be amazing. Listen, this is powerful. I can do this through the camera. You know, how amazing is that? You know, really. So praise the Lord. I've already talked to the Lord about it. And, you know, he'll do it. I've done it before through cameras where the power of God's hit uh, people close to me and stuff. It's been amazing. Okay, say this with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God and the only way to God. That you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I now confess to you any sins which you have made me conscious or sins committed by my ancestors. Lord, I repent of all sins I've ever committed. I hate them and I turn from them. I turn to you, Lord Jesus, for mercy and forgiveness. If I have been involved with the occult, I repent and renounce it. I sever, I sever myself from it through the blood of Jesus. If I have occult objects in my possession, I commit myself to get rid of them. Lord, I forgive any person who has ever harmed me or wronged me. I forgive them just as I want you to forgive me. Lord, to the best of my ability, I've met your conditions. I now claim your promise. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I'm calling on you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Deliver me from all evil spirits. I hate them. They are not my friends. They are my enemies. I command them to go from me now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, I take full authority over the child of God who is watching this video. Holy Spirit, you are with them right now. Holy Spirit, let your hand be upon their head. Now in the name of Jesus, I command every demonic spirit that is attached to their life be gone now in Jesus' name. You must all leave right now. Every demonic attachment, every soul tie, every generational curse, I break it right now over their lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, let the fire come out of your hand right now. Let the fire be upon their head and all throughout their body. Let the fire be upon them so hot a blaze that no demonic being can stand being anywhere close to them right now in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your hand be upon their head right now in Jesus' name. Let the fire come, the fire. Now baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire. Luke 3.16 says you, you will baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire. Let the Holy Spirit be baptism right now Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit and fire right now Holy Spirit baptize them in the fire right now in the fire now wrap them in your love Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit thank you Lord thank you hallelujah wrap them in your love 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 thank you for your love thank you for your love thank you for your love oh yeah that's nice <laughs> the peace I feel the peace hallelujah Praise the Lord. Listen, that was powerful. If you believe you received it, type, I received it in the comments. Share this with everyone you can. Look, I love you. I love you so much. Thank you for letting me walk you through this. That was powerful. I know you felt it because I felt it. Like, that was powerful. So, I love you so much. I love you. Tune in to all my channels. I love you. God bless you. Come on.